G'day folks, be excited, the yabbying videos are back. Hey you, you're watching Robbie Fishing. Now this year, as with every year, I've been inundated with the comment, hey Robbie, when are you gonna make more yabbying videos? Or Robbie, can you do more yabbying? Or the other day I had one that just said, bring back the yabbying videos. So folks, here it is, a yabbying video. I probably won't catch any yabbies, but it's a yabbying video. <laughs> Seriously, it's the middle of winter. Here in my area in Wangaratta, the middle of winter is the worst time of the year to go yabbying. I rarely catch yabbies this time of the year. And that's why I don't make yabbying videos. That's not because I don't like to go yabbying anymore. It's because they're just too hard to catch. They bury into the mud or they just lay low and don't eat. They shut right down when the water gets cold. And this is off season. But anyway, you guys wanted a yabbying video, so I thought I'm in lockdown. I can only go five kilometers from home and the river's flooded. I've got nothing else to do. So why not throw a couple of uh, nets in the waterway here and see if I can catch some yabbies. But just a warning, this may be a fishless or yabbyless video. In fact, it most likely will be a yabbyless video, but you just never know what might happen. Last time I was out here yabbying in this spot, I caught the most unusual thing. I caught an oriental weather loach. You may have seen that video. But anyway, I have got two collapsible bait traps and they are in their collapsed position and I've got a little bit of venison for bait. If you don't know what venison is, it's deer meat. It's not deer meat because it costs a lot of money. It's deer meat because it comes off a deer. Just like Bambi or The Yearling. Who remembers that show, The Yearling? Anyway, let's get Bambi in the nets. Get the nets in the water. Then go home and wait. Now I do catch yabbies in this spot from time to time. Sometimes it goes alright, sometimes it doesn't. This dries up every couple of years, and I think it was dry last summer. That dam over there, that never dries up. And I reckon what actually happens, when we get a lot of water like now, the water that's full, that's actually connected to this dam. And I'm sort of hoping that maybe some yabbies might walk backwards and forwards from there to here and here to there and etc. So I'm sort of hoping that with all the fresh water in here, there might be a couple of yabbies in here. But even if there is, Catching them in the middle of July is going to be a big ask. Number two can just go in close. Tangled, oh, that's better. It's a little bit deep just there. Right, eh? Both nets are in. Can I even just catch one yabby in the middle of winter? Well, let's wait till tomorrow to find out. All right, folks, it's been 24 hours since I put these nets in. Let's go ahead and catch nothing. But before I do, I just want to tell you that I what I done. Earlier this week, I had my first COVID jab. I was very fortunate because I'm in my 40s. They gave me Pfizer. So I've been thinking about this. Now I'm vaxxed, relaxed, and ready to catch a Cherax Destructor. <laughs> been rehearsing that for a couple of days. <laughs> Alright, tell you what, if I catch a yabby, it's going to be a miracle, but I'm going to look like an idiot because I've been saying that you don't catch them this time of year. What the hell? I didn't even bring a bucket. Look how slow, he's alive. He's alive, look how slow they are. My God, it's the middle of winter. Look how slow he is. Because the water's so cold, my God. One, same with this one. He's alive. He's alive, but look how slow he is. They are huge. I never even brought a bucket. <gasps> I was so sure that I wasn't going to catch anything. Hey, Robbie, why haven't you been doing any yabbying? Because it's winter and they don't bite. Come on, buddy. Let go. Let go. They look dead. Look how slow he is at moving. He's so slow. Wow. Oh, look at the claw mark in him or something's been eating him. <laughs> Four big yabbies. There's still one more in here. Hang on, I'll put me GoPro back on me scone. Well, for all of you people that keep asking, when are you going to make more yabbying videos? Why aren't you making yabbying videos? Well, I have no more answers. I have no answers. Oh, yeah, I've been telling you all because it's winter and they don't bite in winter. 
And then I just caught four big ones. <laughs> right about now, I suspect I might be looking like a real goose because I told you all I wasn't going to catch anything. I'm even more surprised than you are. This is amazing. <laughs> Now because I've bought no bucket with me, because I uh, I didn't really have a heightened anticipation, in other words I expected to catch nothing, so because I bought no bucket I've had to throw them all back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my net back and hope that I can catch them again. And if I can catch them again tomorrow, well maybe then I might do a catch and cook. Surely right, net number two, surely this hasn't got four big ones in it as well. I don't think it's got any in it. Look at that. I caught four in the one net, and none in the second net. What are the odds? What are the chances? Unbelievable. Well, I'm going to keep the nets in. I might move this one. They came out over near that tree there, so I wonder if I just go over here. That's the deepest part. I wonder if I need to be close to the edge or something, maybe. It didn't land very well. I'll try that one more time. I know I can do better than that. Right. What if I just put it there on the shallows around the edge? I'll leave it there to see if the shallow water helps. I'll leave them in one more night. I'll come back tomorrow and check them. Now, I'm going to be honest. I did do an impatient check. I came here just before dark last night after I'd had about three or four hours, and I caught nothing. They were yabulous, as expected. Four big ones in that net. And they were decent sized yabbies too. And none in this net. Four yabbies in the middle of July, the current temperature is about 7 degrees, I don't even think it's been over 10 for about 4 days, and I caught, I'm gobsmacked, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say for the first time in my life. <laughs> I'm going to give them another 24 hours and see what tomorrow brings, if there's nothing, there's nothing, if I catch those four again or any others, I'll do a little bit of a catch and cook. Alright, see you tomorrow. I'm excited. Righto folks, I'm back for day three. I've worked out that I've been wearing the same red shirt and got the same grey sky in every day. So I've had a shave, just to make today look a little bit different. <laughs> anyway, today is the wintriest of the wintry days. Today it's been raining, it's only seven degrees and you just shouldn't catch gabbies. But yesterday I caught four and I was very surprised but I forgot to bring a bucket, so I put them back. Today, I've got my bucket if I can catch a couple of yabbies, and I only need two or three, just for a bit of a demonstration, I'll take them home and cook them up. If I don't catch any, well, it'll just be a shorter video. Right, let's check them. I'll put my GoPro up on my noggin. Alright. Now, all I want is two or three yabbies. Now that I actually want yabbies, you watch, I won't catch any. If I just get two or three, well, that'll be enough. Yes, I've got two, I've got three, I've got four. I wonder if it's the same four. I think one of them's bigger. One of them had a big, uh, what is it, a bit of light? I didn't catch that one yesterday. None of them were this greeny colour. That's a good sign. Look at that, BYO water. Nice and clear. <laughs> Only because it's too cold to risk going down there. I don't know that I caught them. I'm looking for one with a big cut in him. And I also caught one with one claw yesterday. Look at this big fella. Uh, he hasn't got the big laceration. Beautiful big yabbies. Yabbing in the middle of winter. Who would have thunk, hey? Eh? And I don't know. This is small. I only caught one this small yesterday and he only had one claw. When I say small, he's huge for some waterways, small for others. He seems to be a little bit undersized for this waterway. But folks, this is going to be turned into a yabby in catch and cook. You beauty. I'm going to take the net out now. Right, now this one had none in it yesterday. You remember, there was none over here, so I moved it over there. Has that helped? Have I built on my tally of four? No. Is there a bloody hole in this net or something? I caught four there yesterday and none here. And then today I caught four there and none here again. There's no hole in the net. Just seems to be that side of the dam is where they seem to like to hang out. That's really bizarre. And the four that I caught, I can't guarantee they were the same four as yesterday. The one with the scar is missing and the one with the uh, with only one claw is missing. So I know at least two of them 
I didn't catch yesterday. Anyway, folks, I'm going to pack these nets up and take them home. This has blown me away. I've been telling you for ages it's the wrong time of year to catch yabbies. And then I've gone out and caught eight yabbies. Four of them I'm going to cook up. Stay tuned because I'm going to teach you the very best way and the easiest way to cook yabbies. Right, eh? now it's time to start cooking these yabbies. Before I do, check this out. How cool is this apron? This was given to me by Zeppelin Allen when I was down in Now and Hour. It was handmade at the farmer's cottage in Now and Hour. Thanks for the apron, Zip. This is for the kitchen cooks. Let's get these yabbies on the boil. If you hear some background noise, it's just that. Now for this video, I'm going to use my Trangia kit, my Metho burner, and I'm going to do it as simple and basic as possible. I believe this is the best way to cook yabbies. It's the easiest for a number of reasons. I'm going to do it with as few utensils as I've got. In fact, I'm going to do it using nothing more than what I've got just there. Right, now that I've got my water and my trangier all set up, I'm going to light it and get the water boiling. With a trangier being a, a few, an alcohol stove or a metho stove, when you first light it, these matches aren't going to work. I, to, I light the match with a cigarette lighter. Now that's lit. Now, when you first light a fuel stove, you can't see the flame. You can just feel it. But it will build. So I'll put the water on there now. Then I'll put the lid on. And within you know, a little while, I don't know, 30 or 40 seconds, we might see some bigger orange flames. Now I'm just going to explain to you where the yabbies are. Usually I just throw them in the boiling water. And uh, the boiling water is an instant kill when they die. But I've been reading the RSPCA website and their guidelines on how to humanely dispatch crustaceans. And it says the best thing you can do is put them in an ice water slurry. They go into an eye, you put them in an ice water slurry, then they go into a deep sleep, and then you can mechanically kill them. That's their words, mechanically. Now, I'm not going to be boiling these yabbies whole. I'm going to break their tail off. I'm only going to boil the tail, and I'll show you why in a little while. So, I'll want to really make sure that they're in a really, really deep sleep, so that they don't feel it when I do that. So, I've done exactly what the RSPCA say. I've put them in water. A few things that I learnt while doing some research is that once their water, once their body temperature drops below 4 degrees, they go into a deep torpor. Which is also kind of like a hibernation. Their heart rate slows right down and they don't feel as much. They become non-responsive below 4 degrees. I also found out that with saltwater crustaceans, you should put them in a saltwater slurry and never a freshwater slurry. And with freshwater crustaceans such as yabbies, you should use a freshwater slurry only. So they're in the ice slurry now, and they've been there for about half an hour. It says 20 minutes, so they should be well and truly non-responsive. But anyway, I'm not going to take them out until the water's boiling. I can already feel it starting to warm up. Now there's my yabbies in their ice water slurry. There was more ice than water before, but a fair bit of the ice has melted. But check them out, they're not fighting each other. They're perfectly alive. But they're just motionless. They're in a deep sleep. Right, now this water is almost boiling here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start getting the yabbies ready. Now, this might look a bit gross, but this is what the RSPCA says is the best thing to do. Put them in the ice slurry first, so that they become totally non-responsive, just like that. Now, I'm going to rip its tail off. Now, with its tail, I'll see if I can get it to focus on there. If you do it this way, if you do it when they're green, and I hope that focus is okay, what you can do, you get the middle fin. You see these five fins across the tail? If you get the middle one, then twist it, the poo line will come out. You see that? And that saves a lot of time when you're shelling. And also when they're green, you get a much cleaner break here when you shell them. When they're cooked, quite often you pull half the guts and stuff out with them. So, I'll chuck that in the water. The water's not quite boiling, but that's okay. Now I'm also going to rip the claws off and throw them in there as well. 
I'm gonna put the scraps down here and pick them up after. I got my next yabby, same thing. Claws in the water, and once again, I'll fan that out. I'll grab the middle one and I'll pull that pipe out of the center. You can eat that if you cook them whole and just shell them. It doesn't matter if that's in there, it won't make you sick, but it will taint the flavor of the meat. Now, as I said, according to the RSPCA, that is the best way to do it. To, uh, they recommend, that's called mechanically killing it. They recommend to stun them first in the ice water slurry. And to be honest, that actually looked quite good. Even when I broke the tail off, there was no resistance, no movement, no sign that the yabbies were in any pain whatsoever because they were stunned by the ice cold water. Now we just wait for them to boil. Here we go. There's my tails and claws. Whoops, I fogged the lens up. But there's my tails and claws cooking under there. I reckon I'll give them probably you know, five or six minutes and that should be enough. When you're doing this, you can add stuff. Salt or vinegar or lemon juice are always the best. Any combination of those three, even all three at once, and that's okay. But I'm deliberately trying to make this like a minimalist style of cooking yabbies. The way you do it if you were out the bush. Check this out. I'll take this off to slow the boil down a bit. Look at the orange flame. Remember when I first lit it, I couldn't see the flame? Look at it now. I love me, uh, me Trangier, it's my favourite stove. These days a lot of people are going to the new, you can get gas conversions, like a little gas burner that sits inside the Trangier and a hose comes out the side of a gas bottle. A lot of people prefer that because they offer better flame control, which it does. This is the flame control on a Trangier. If I want that to have less flame, I've got to put that on it and then open it to how much flame I want. That's a simmer, that's a boil. <laughs> that's the flame control. Simple, I love it. But a lot of people prefer the gas burner so that you can just turn it up and down as you go. But I prefer the metho because I like to know how much I'm carrying. I know how much I've got at any given time because I'm carrying my metho bottle with me. With gas, if you think your gas bottle's running low, you end up buying a second gas bottle. The next thing you know, you're carrying a Trangia and two gas bottles. And if you're not careful, you end up with about five gas bottles. But anyway, I reckon they're about done, so I'm going to put that out. And to do that, all I've got to do is close that right over and then drop that on top. Which isn't always as easy as it seems. There we go. That's out. Smothered. Sit that in there for a minute and let the water cool a bit. Alright, I've got my other saucepan here. They come with two saucepans of trangiers. I'll tip most of the water out. It's still very hot, so I need to be very careful. Oh, getting a bit warm now. One more. Got them. They're all out. They're all cooling. There is my yabbies. Well, there are my yabbies. Now, I've just got to let them cool down. And at the moment, it's about 9 degrees, I think, so that shouldn't take too long. Right, now, there's my, my yabbies. I've got the claws off the biggest ones and the tails off all of them. Some of the best things about cooking them this way, one obviously, according to the RSPCA, it's the most humane way to do it, but also you can get that poo line out, that pipe, that pipe out of the tail, you can get that out really easily, and you can cook a lot of yabbies in a small amount of water. If I was to cook yabbies in this small little pot, well I'd have to cook them one at a time, and even if this was a raging boil, one of these big yabbies would drop that off the boil, and the yabby would die a slow, a slow death. So... By having, by doing it this way, it just allows you to cook more yabbies in a smaller pot. Now let's start shelling. The tails will be easy. I'll move that out of the way a little bit. What I'll do, and I just hope that this focus is okay, I normally just grab about a half an inch down, and I pull that off like that, and I'll pull the next one off, and then I'll grab the tail and I'll wiggle it a bit, then off she comes, just like that. And I don't have to, normally, if you've done it the other way, you've got to pull that back out and pull that, that pipe out. But you don't have to when it's done this way. I'll do that again. I'll do it a bit quicker. So I'll just rip the side off. Yabbies are actually much easier to shell than crayfish. Sometimes you can get away with just ripping the front little bit off like that. And there's my tail meat ready to go. Third one. Just rip that off. Wiggle it. Out she comes. Fourth one. Strip that off, wiggle it, out she comes. 
four tails, quick and easy. The claws are much more challenging. Inside the claw here, there's like, there's like a big plastic fan right in the middle. If I can break this off and get that out, like that, that's the big plastic bit I was telling you about. That meat, that can go in with the meat. The meat that's in this claw is magnificent, but I've got to break that open, and I normally use a pair of pliers, so I'll do that when I go inside afterwards. And that's the nicest meat. But should I break that open, and that big plastic bit doesn't come out like that, if that doesn't come out, then that makes it harder to get the meat out. So I know that that one, those two claws are both good to go. And there's a good example. That one there, just don't you see that? That came, that came out like that. Without that, that's still got the big plastic bit inside. That's going to be much harder to get the meat out, but I'll still give it a go. Well, there it is, folks. I've got me four tails, and I've got a few claws there ready to crack open. I'll eat the tails now, then I'll eat the claws inside. Now, you can add a bit of salt to make it a bit nicer, but I'm just trying to keep this as it would be if I was out in the bush. Just straight. And that is the nicest food you will ever eat. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the texture of that meat. People sometimes ask me, do I prefer yabbies or crayfish? Personal preference, I prefer yabbies. Crayfish are bigger, yabbies are easier to shell, they're not as spiky to handle, and I just taste a bit sweeter, I reckon. Well, folks, that's it for the yabby catch and cook. The winter yabbying catch and cook. Big thanks to Zepp, Zeppelin Allen, for this awesome apron. I love it, Zepp, you are a legend. The tails were absolutely beautiful. Now I've got the claws to nibble on in front of the TV later on. I'm, I am absolutely stoked. Yabbying in the middle of winter. Give it a go. You just never know. <laughs> I must have looked like a real goose. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, why not give me a big fat thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button because you might like some of my other videos. Hopefully I'll see you in my next video.